So hello, everyone. Welcome to our first pre-arrival webinar called Starting Your Into Suffolk Journey. First, I would like to introduce a couple staff members to you today. My name is Christine Perlmutter. I'm the Assistant Director of Student Experience for Into Suffolk. And we also have another staff member here now too. Hi everybody, uh, my name is Susie. I am the office coordinator here at Into Suffolk. Uh, so I will be at the uh, Into Suffolk Center welcome desk uh, when you come to Boston in January. Uh, so if you ever have any questions about anything, uh, when you're in the center, you can always come to the welcome desk and see me and I will be more than happy to help you. Thank you, Susie. And we have another staff member too, Rachel Imlock, who will be joining us uh, later on in the presentation. And we have a student here today. Would you like to introduce yourself? Tell us your program that you'll be studying uh, it into? Uh, hello, Miss. Uh, I'm Abu Morshid Zaman. I'm from Bangladesh, and I'll be studying in business program. Great. Well, it's nice to have you here with us today. Thank you, Miss. All right. And I will um, again remind you of who the student experience team is. My name is Christine Perlmutter, Assistant Director of Student Experience. Rachel Emlock is the Student Engagement and Leadership Specialist. And Susie Lewis is our Office Coordinator. We welcome you. First, we're going to start with a checklist of things to do before we arrive in Boston. First, we have an arrivals detail form that we want to make sure everyone completes. We'll give you more information about these in the presentation. We want to talk about uh, the due date for paying fees, uploading immunization documents, making sure you have your housing secure, and to make sure you come to our Into Suffolk webinars. We will have four of them in all. All right, and what are some important dates? Our move-in date, if you're living in the dormitory, is Monday, January 9th. Our orientation will be January 10th through 13th. Our first day of classes will be January 17th. We will have a special spring break, March 13th through 17th. There will be no classes during that time, so you can relax and do something fun. And our next Into Suffolk pre-arrival webinar will be Tuesday, November 22nd at the same time. Are there any questions so far about the dates? No, miss. I don't have any questions. Great. All right, so what is the arrival details form? Well, all students are required to submit arrival details regardless of their location coming into Boston. So if you're coming into the dormitory or an apartment or a hotel or staying with relatives, we still need you to submit when you will arrive to the Boston area. If you don't have your ticket yet, our primary airport is Boston Logan. And we do offer free airport pickup service from Boston Logan for all students and their relatives traveling with them or their companions within 10 miles of Boston. We cannot guarantee a reservation request made less than 72 hours in advance, but we will do our best to accommodate and we prefer that you arrange your flights to arrive between our time, 8 a.m. and 10 p.m. to make it easy to pick you up. But again, we will do our best to accommodate all times. It's very important that students complete the airport arrival form at this link and to complete it, even if you don't need airport arrival pickup, we still need you to complete the form for when you are arriving to the Boston area. 
we need this immigration information, not only for to know about that, but also to track your arrival. Any questions? This is what the form looks like from this link. And we can um, share that link with you. We will be sharing that link with you in communication and emails. And um, this, this PowerPoint will be on our website and you can refer to it at any time. Any questions about arrival details? Uh, no, miss. That's fine. Okay. Do you already have your flight? Uh, yeah, I've been, I'll be flying to Toronto first because of my family vacation. It's going to be on 26th, but I, uh, I'll be hoping to move to Boston with my family on 2nd of January. That sounds wonderful. Thank you for letting me know and um, enjoy your vacation in Canada. Toronto uh, is you, one Ms. of my favorite cities in the entire world. Thank you, Miss. All right. So if you have questions um, about any of these, we want to tell you who to contact for information. So who can I contact for financial information or admissions or other requirements? Well, late payments, just so you know, will cause an additional late fee. For questions about finance, you want to contact John Holbrooks, uh, the center finance assistant. In addition, students will need to submit official transcripts from all of the schools that you have attended in the past. And for information about anything to do with admissions, this is the email address into enrollment um, at suffolk.edu for any of those types of questions. A very important question many students have is how do students get their email and login credentials? I'm going to have Susie take this slide as she will be working closely with any students who have issues with this particular part of being a Suffolk student. Thanks, Justine. Uh, so, yep. So how do students uh, get their email and their login credentials? So um, all into Suffolk students will receive uh, two emails from the university um, Technology Support Services or IT Services. Um, one of these emails will contain your Suffolk University uh, account username, and the other one will uh, contain your Suffolk University uh, password. Um, and the username and password is what you will use to log on to all of the uh, Suffolk University systems. Uh, so um, really important systems like your email, um, as well as a system called Blackboard, which is what you use uh, for your classes to submit assignments. Um, and so once you have these credentials, you will be able to access um, all of these Suffolk University websites and email. Um, and Suffolk will send these credentials using uh, the email that you gave on your application. Uh, so please make sure that that is um, your personal uh, email address and that is, is something that you check um, because the email will be sent, uh, sent to you there. So you wanna make sure that you have access uh, to that inbox or checking it regularly. Uh, and these emails should arrive um, on November 22nd. So make sure um, on that date and then after that date you are checking uh, to make sure that you've gotten uh, those two emails. If you um, haven't gotten those emails um, and it uh, is after that date, you can always reach out to us um, and let us know. Hey, I haven't gotten my uh, username and password email and we can definitely uh, look into that for you and uh, fix uh, fix that issue and get you your uh, your credentials. 
Um, and then the photo on the side here is uh, just an image of what the email will look like. So um, you'll be able to see uh, the information that it will contain, but it will be specific uh, to you. So you'll have a specific uh, username and uh, password here in this, in this email. Uh, so again, just make sure that you are checking your personal email that you used on your application um, on November 22nd. And uh, if you do not get that email, uh, please make sure that you reach out to us and we can get you that information. Great. Thank you so much, Susie. Welcome. Any questions about the email, username, and password? No, miss. All right. Okay, so one point we want to make very clear to students is that orientation is required. All students must attend all orientation sessions. These sessions are important because you will learn so much about Suffolk University and into Suffolk and also become prepared for your studies and feel comfortable with our center in school. The orientation begins, um, actually, I'm sorry, that says Wednesday. That should say Tuesday, my typo. I will fix that in the PowerPoint. Um, it begins Tuesday, January 10th at um, 10 a.m. If you want breakfast, we will have that ready for you beforehand. Check your email for the specific schedule when it gets closer. The move-in date, if you're living in the dormitory, is January 9th. You will get an email from Residence Life with more information about move-in. At orientation, you will learn a lot of things, including getting your class schedule, meeting your academic advisor, learning how to use our technology here. We use Blackboard, Navigate, WebAdvisor, and more, and we will teach you all the technology you need. We will take a campus tour so you can find your classes easily and know all of our buildings and resources. You will learn about the safety and security on campus and in Boston. And you will explore all of the university resources we have for you and even more. You will meet your other classmates and some of your instructors during orientation, and you will definitely get to know the staff members. Do you have any questions about orientation? No, miss. I got it. Thank you. All right. So if you're living on campus, what can you expect? Well, the good news is all dormitories are walking distance to our academic buildings. We're a very close knit community here. Uh, nothing is farther than about 10 minutes away at the most. Um, every dorm will have a resident assistant on each floor or every other floor who will provide assistance to all students. There is a residence hall community where each residence hall will have their own social activities and will do programming and get to know each other very well. We will provide each student living in the dorm with a bed, a mattress, a desk, a chair, a wardrobe, a dresser, and we will also provide you with a set of sheets, a pillow, a blanket, a comforter, and towels. All dorms also have television and internet services and include Wi-Fi. We also have university meal plans that you can choose from for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Residence Life will match you with the roommate to provide you with a better academic experience. So um, they take into consideration students and the language and the personality that you put on your application and will match you with a roommate that hopefully you will enjoy for your time spent here. Okay, what if you're living off campus? Well, we can help you with finding off-campus housing. 
We have an off-campus housing portal that you can use to find listings of apartments in the area. You will need your Suffolk University email and password before you can contact owners in the off-campus housing portal. However, you can use the housing portal before November 22nd just to look around, but you cannot contact anyone until after November 22nd to submit an application for housing. For more details, you can visit our website, which is at this link here, which will bring you straight to the off-campus housing portal. And it looks like this. Any questions about off-campus housing? No, miss. And do you are already know where you will be living? Yeah, I will be living on campus. So I don't think I should have this question of this. Okay, that's but right. Miss, I have one one question in general. Like, if I suppose I live an year in campus, and if I decide to move out of the campus, uh, can I do this still? Like, um, I have the website and look at the listings after that. Yes. So according to your program, you must yeah. live in on-campus housing until you progress or transition out of the into program. So for example, if you're studying with into for one semester and then you progress out, you will stay in on-campus housing for one semester. Wow. Um, do you know from your program how many semesters you are with into? Uh, I for now I just know how to, like I know just that I have one semester, so. Right, yeah. and we can verify your program later just to confirm. But if you are a one semester into student, then you can begin looking for housing for the summer. Okay, got it. And yes, you can use our off-campus housing portal to help you with that. Okay, miss. But in the meantime, we welcome you to our residence life and living on campus. We're excited for you to enjoy the college experience of living in the dorms in the United States, which is actually very social, very exciting, and a lot of fun and convenient. And we're happy to have you. Thank you. All right. We also have another resource to find off-campus housing, which is the company Roost Up, which can help you locate roommates and apartments. All right, what are some important things for you to bring with you? You need your original I-20, of course, your passport and F-1 visa. You need your CVIS fee payment receipt, evidence of funding for tuition and living costs. You need health forms, immunization documents, any medical prescriptions you have. You should bring at least 60 days of medication with you if you use medicine and any health insurance documents you have. As an INTO student, we will sign you up automatically for our health insurance. Um, and so you can talk to us about that if you want, if you have your own personal health insurance. You must have your official transcripts from all schools you have attended and any test scores that you might have. We encourage everyone to bring a laptop with you and all charging cables. A desktop is great for your room, but it's important to have a portable laptop or some type of um, iPad or uh, Google uh, Chromebook or something like that, because your professors will require you to do writing on your computer in class. So it's important to have that with you. And of course, you know you're coming at winter time and it's very and from Bangladesh it's very warm there right uh, yeah it is really warm here yeah Compared so make to... sure make sure you have enough winter clothing hats gloves coats 
boots, or we have many shopping around this area. We have all kinds of shopping um, you can find here uh, if you don't have those things, but it does get cold in winter. Any questions about what documents you should bring with you? No, it's fine. I have it all, so it Great. should be fine. All right, so let's talk more about the Boston weather. Let me ask you, have you ever traveled to Boston before? No, I've been to New York, and my uncle lives in Washington, so I've been there, but not in Boston. Specifically. All right. Well, New York is very close, only about four hours away, so probably yeah. pretty similar. Some All of right. my friends went to New York as well, so. Oh, okay, great. Um, yeah, so you're familiar with the United States. Yeah. All right. Well, in in our September to November, um, we get about three degrees Celsius to 23 degrees Celsius. Today is kind of raining, but not too cold. Our winter will start in December through March and can get to negative five to 14 around that. Our spring becomes very lovely, April through June, uh, five to 20 degrees. And our summers can actually get pretty hot, um, anywhere from 10 to 28. We do have a wide range of weather in Boston. Uh, one day can be cold and the next day can be 30 degrees difference. It's true. Our weather changes rapidly and can vary quite large. So you do need a lot of different types of clothing for that kind of weather. All right, just so you know, though, in the US, we do not use Celsius. We talk about weather in terms of Fahrenheit. Um, so you might hear someone say, oh, it's about 40 degrees today. And you're like, what? It's 40 degrees? Well, that's very different um, from Celsius. It's actually kind of cold to be 40 degrees. Uh, do you have any questions or do you know about Fahrenheit? Yeah, I do. I do Great. know, but perfect. That's very helpful. All right. Now we want to talk about Boston neighborhoods. We are in a lovely, lovely location. If you look at the red star on the map, that is where Suffolk University is located, right in the middle of everything in Boston. And it's we have an excellent public transport system that we will talk about next that you're able to access from all of the neighborhoods straight into Suffolk University. So you're living in the dorm, which means you can hop on the subway at any time and go anywhere around the city, easily convenient. Um, it's wonderful. Some popu popular locations include Fenway, Back Bay in East Boston. Let me ask you, have you ever heard of Fenway before? Uh, yeah, I heard of it from my uncle, but I'd never been there. So mm -hmm. I don't know actually about it. That's okay. You've heard of it though, because there's a famous Boston sports team that plays. Oh, in okay. Is it Boston Celtics? Oh, it's not the Celtics. They're over okay. in the North End. Okay. It's the Boston Red Sox, our baseball. Oh, yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah. Back Bay is famous for shopping, high-end shopping. And East Boston is where the airport is and where many students live who live off campus. Okay. Any questions about Boston neighborhoods or Boston in general? No, miss. Oh, I'm fine. Great. All right. This is what our public transportation looks like. It's actually very easy to use and the colors represent different lines going to different parts of the city. So you will hear people say, oh, I need to catch the red line or, oh, that's on the orange line or I live on the blue line. And luckily for Suffolk University, we're here at Downtown Crossing, if you can see that. This is where the orange 
the blue and red are all in this very close area. And we also have a purple line that will take you out to different parts of Massachusetts. That's our commuter rail. And we have a silver line that will take you to the airport. Very easy to get around Boston using the subway system. Are you familiar with using the subway system in New York? Uh, yeah, I've been like, I, I used it on Washington because in New York, I was with my dad. So he was doing it. So. Right. So he was taking you around. But in wa yeah. do you, Washington, D.C. or Washington State? Yeah, uh, Washington, D.C. Oh, their subway system is wonderful, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I've been to many places there. So, yes, um, there uh, in Washington, D.C., the subway is very easy to use as well and very modern and nice. Now, Boston is a historical city and very old and our subway system might seem like a little old at times uh we're but we're definitely easy to use and very convenient all right so we just want to go over some important dates to remember that fees are due december 13th on campus move-in day is January 9th, which you will be doing. Orientation is Tuesday, January 10th to Friday, January 13th, and is required and all sessions are very valuable and important. And academic schedules will be given to you on Friday. The academic advisor needs time to make sure all students are prepared to um, have taken all their testing that they need to do and they need time to register. So those schedules will be ready on the 13th and we will talk more about that at our next webinar. Any questions here about these dates? Uh, Miss, uh, when do I have to pay the dormitory fees? Yes, so all fees, including dormitory fees are due December 13th. Okay, okay, got it. And since you are um, an undergraduate student, that means yeah. you will also need to take the math placement test. Yeah. No matter what your major is, you must take the math placement test. And yeah. once you have your credentials on November 22nd, you can go in and, and take the test at any time. But you should take it before you arrive. The sooner you take the math placement test, the quicker your advisor is able to register you for classes. Okay. Uh, when does it have to be like uh, given out from like, when do I have to submit the result? Yes. So we ask you to submit the result as soon as you have your email and password credentials. But technically, if you don't take the math placement test, we will give it to you during orientation. But honestly, it just makes things a little bit more inconvenient for us. And also it makes it less time to do your registration of your classes. And we, um, once we have that math placement test, we know which classes to put you in. And having it sooner is better. Okay. So, like, when is the, uh, I can submit it within, like, December 15, 16, it doesn't yeah. matter, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes. We really ask that as long as you submit it as early as you can is great, but before January 9th. Okay. Got it. Okay. All right. So, again, December 13th, January 9th. January 10th to 13th and January 13th are very important days to remember. Okay, our next webinar will be Wednesday, November 30th, same time as this one, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And it will teach students how to pay their financial fees and upload their immunization records and we'll also discuss about all the documents they need to bring and any other questions students might have.
All right. Christine, I just had a question real quick about yeah. the next webinar. Um, I think a previous slide said it was Tuesday, the 22nd. I just want to make sure um, if it is Tuesday or Wednesday. Oh, thank you for catching that. Yep. Um, actually, it's difficult with me sharing my screen to look that up. Do you um, do you have access to look in the calendar? Yes, I'm pretty sure it is um, the 30th, but yes. let me double check really quick. Yeah, I'm not sure why that slide said the 22nd. I apologize for that. I will fix that um, before we put the PowerPoint on our website. Let me just double check. Um, I have on my end. Uh, yeah, I have the 30th. Okay. So, yes. So, I will change that other slide. I apologize for that um, error. But, yes, our next webinar is Wednesday, November 30th. Thank you. On Wednesday, December 7th, we will have a webinar about ac your academics, about getting your schedule, the math placement exam, study tips, um, education in the United States. And then our final webinar, Tuesday, December 13th, will be a meet and greet. You'll be able to meet some current students here, part of our peer leadership council. You will hear about our clubs and activities on campus and kind of find out what it's like to be a student here. Uh, that time is actually switched. Uh, hopefully it's still convenient to you. Um, it will be our time in the evening because we're having students join and it's better for our students to meet with you after classes in the afternoons, um, in the evening, uh, but hopefully you can make it. If you can't, there will be a recording to watch later, but we're hoping you'll be able to meet our students then. All right, and now we are being joined by our student engagement and leadership specialist, Rachel Emelock, who will, hi, you're here just in time to talk to our guest and those watching the recording about how to contact us and stay informed and uh, be part of our social media. So awesome. welcome, Rachel. Well, great, thank you. Um, I'm Rachel and I'm, um, <laughs> all right, <Susie. laughs> I'm sorry guys. Uh, there's a bit of an echo when you're in a room together. Um, so I'm Rachel, I'm the student engagement and leadership specialist. And for, um, getting in touch with both me or Christine or even Susie, um, you can send us an email at into at suffolk.edu. All of your general questions about your life here at Into and in Boston can go to this email um, and it will go to one of us and we can all check in and one of us will get back to you as soon as possible. Um, for those of you who might have some big questions or you want to watch this webinar again or you want to check out all the information we have for you already, um, you can go to our student experience website at sites.suffolk.edu backslash into Suffolk. Pretty simple. It's in all of our emails that we send out to you, so you should be able to access it pretty easily. Um, if you lose it, send us an email. We'll get back to you really fast. Um, there are two Instagrams that we want you to follow. The first Instagram, you might already be following it. It's into underscore Suffolk. And that's on Instagram, and it might even be on Snapchat. I'm not sure about Snapchat, but I know it's definitely on Instagram. The other Instagram is the one that um, the student experience team runs. And this one is into underscore Suffolk underscore students. Okay. And this will give you an idea of the different activities that we have going on every week. It even has stuff that's going on on campus that we're not hosting, but we know it's gonna be a good event because we've talked to the people who are organizing it. So we promote it and we're like, hey, this week's International Education Week. 
you should come to this magic, awesome, you know, international night. There's going to be food and games and music. It's going to be really fun. Um, so that's kind of what we do on our different social media pages. So you can see them here. Um, we have the Into Suffolk and then the Into Suffolk students. They have two different icons. So the top one um, above is with the blue background. That's the Into Suffolk students. And then the Into um, logo in the circle, that's the Into Suffolk. So we really hope you get in touch with us. Please don't be afraid. We're really nice. You can send DMs to both of the Instagrams with your questions if you don't feel comfortable sending an email. Um, and someone is always organized. We have access to these. We're answering them all the time. Um, so if it's like a weird thing where you think about it, you know, you're scrolling online and you're like, oh, that looks really cool. I wonder if I could do that. Send us an email. Send us an Instagram message. Totally okay with us. Um, we look forward to hearing from you guys because we want you to feel very comfortable when you get here. So we hope you we hope to see you in a couple of weeks. And yeah, send us off emails. It'll be good. All right. Thank you, Rachel. And um, <laughs> Mahabab, do you have any questions or anything you would like to talk you. about? No, miss. I'm fine. I got it. Anyone else here, Christine? Hmm? Or is it just me? Or am I just me? No, we're good. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. All right. I'm going to stop the recording now.